The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We kick off the second quarter. We begin April trading, April 1st. That's the end of March, folks. Hope everyone had a nice Easter weekend out there. Long weekend, closed for Good Friday. We got some core PCE inflation data. We'll go over that in a moment. You pick up the market action. We're higher by five points, but a little bit of a sell-off from where we were at about 7 a.m. this morning. You see the acceleration on the futures. Last night, we jump higher. Factoring in, the market was closed on Friday. We get inflation data. Market trades up to 53.33 in the futures. We hold that price level until about 7 a.m. this morning. We're back off that price level just a bit. As I mentioned, market's positive by five. 53.13 in the S&Ps, NASDAQ 100. Pretty similar action. You trade up to above 18,600. We're trading just above 18,505 right now. You're positive by about 30 points. Dow slips slightly into the red. We were at 40,358 on a cash basis. That's pretty close to 40,000. We give up a couple hundred points from that price level right now, trading at 40,175. The Russell up by seven points. Bitcoin hanging around 70,000, 70,445. We were up to almost 72,500 last week. Crude. You talk about it, man. Check out this crude price. We got some action this morning, man, on crude. Up to 83.69. You're backing off a bit. Extreme volatility this morning. We were just at 82.60 as of 8 a.m. You drive to 83.69. You put crude on, crude on a daily basis. That's quite a channel. That is quite a channel of higher highs, higher lows. 83.27 is the price point right now. You're technically positive by nine pennies on the session. But boy, you can't deny that trend on crude as we got higher prices coming at you. Be interesting to see if that complicates the inflation picture as we go forward as higher energy prices in the mix. Speaking of, how about gold, man? Check out the action on gold. We hit a high of 22.86. 22.86, man. Overnight, that was at about midnight, almost midnight on the dot. You give it up a bit. We're 10 bucks off of where you were at 815. Gold with some volatility, technically positive by $37 on the session. Now, $37 is because we had a run after the close, even on Friday, right? Check out that run. Um, excuse me, Thursday from 430 up until you, where you closed out. There's the open on Sunday night futures at 2260. Now, you talk about a trend. I just looked at the trend in crude. How about this trend in gold, man? Gold. You were just trading at 2000 on February 14th. Six weeks later, we're trading at 2276 in the price of crude, uh, gold right now. You jump over to notes and bonds. Following that inflation data, we'll back it up to a five minute. Check it out, man. We got lower price and higher yield coming at you right now. The 10 year, just above four and a quarter percent. 4.25 is the number. Quite a little drop off from where we were at 8 a.m. when we were trading at 110.24. We got lower price. We got higher yield coming at you. You got the 30 year down a full point right now at 119.12. We jump over to the dollar index. Pretty interesting when you think about gold catching an acceleration. And the dollar has held up so well. I mean, look at this dollar, man. Dollar strength, 104.53 right now. The dollar positive by seven pennies on the session. And even with the light of Dollar strength, higher yield. Usually when you have that type of action going on, what's going to happen? Well, if you have a stronger dollar, the price that you're pricing gold in, in stronger dollars might be weakened. But even in the face of that, man, you can't stop the price of gold right now going up, folks. Pretty remarkable. We jump over to the volatility index, the VIX right now. That's an elevated level. But 1372, all things considered, pretty decent action. 1372 on the VIX. It is interesting. We were talking about this channel line on the VIX for some period of time. Higher highs and higher lows. You drop below that price level on March 20th. That was the Fed meeting. And just like that, we're right back at that critical level. 1372 on a historical context. Very low volatility premium in this market right now. But it is interesting 
that as we have green across the board right now, you have a VIX that has spiked from 13 to 1372. Now, we got an interesting week coming up. We have Chairman Powell. He'll be speaking Wednesday. We have the non-farm payroll numbers on Friday. Wage data, of course, a very important component of that with what is going on right now with inflation. We'll see how that plays out. And let's get into those inflation numbers that we got on Friday. 2.8% annually in February, pretty much as expected. The numbers not too not too surprising, as in pretty much in line with what the market had expected. Personal consumption expenditures price index. Now remember, this data was out 8:30 on Friday. Okay, uh, in excluding food and energy, 2.8%. That's the preferred inflation gauge. It's core PCE. Okay, It was up 0.3% from a month ago, both of those in line with estimates. Core PCE, excuse me, yeah, 0.3% for the month and 2.5% at the 12-month rate. Consumer spending was a big one, though. How about a 0.8% on the month, well ahead of the 0.5% estimate? Income, a little bit soft at 0.3% versus 0.4%. So those numbers out Friday, the market taking that in stride, but all things considered, it seems like June is still on the table, man, of where the Fed begins. There are cuts, and we got some data coming down the line before then. That data begins on Friday when we get the non-farm payroll numbers. And, uh, yeah, the data just marches on. As I mentioned, we get Chairman Powell on Wednesday. We have a tremendous amount of Fed speakers out there this week. We'll see where we go. You kick things off. Nonetheless, you got markets up by four points right now. We have given up the acceleration. I mean, last night. I was pretty interested, I'm sure like many of you, to see where futures open as it digested the inflation data that we got when the market was closed on Friday. The market loved that data. You opened at 6 o'clock right where we were. You accelerated up to 53.33. You held that number until about 7 a.m. this morning. And then we've had a little bit of volatility to the downside right now. 53.12. And factor in that what's going on? Well, what's going on is that is correlating to the yield move. Okay, we got lower price, higher yield. The market not too keen right now on the news that we have higher yields coming at you. And it'll be interesting to see where we go from there, for sure. Nonetheless, right? All right, let's march around to see what else we have going on in this market. How about AT&T? Yeah, this is a big one, man. Let's jump around. AT&T. There's a drop for you. From 1760 down to 1717, the news out that they lost everyone's data, including your Social Security numbers, folks. What is AT&T AT &T even doing? with your social security number. That's what I want to know. Uh, AT&T is investigating a leak to put millions of customers' data on the dark web. That data includes 7.6 million current customers, but here's the kicker. Along with 65.4 million former account holders who also had their data compromised. I hope that there's, at some point, some regulations that might come into this because when you think about your social security number, how that factors in, why does a company like AT&T, okay? It's almost impossible to secure your data at this day and age, as in, you know, that is one of the arguments that's made with TikTok, right? Even with companies like Microsoft, Facebook, Google, etc., they have your data, and the Chinese government can still get it through hacks if they want to. Um, not necessarily, right? But they're making those attempts. But it is interesting that they have basically everything. Home address, phone number, date of birth, social security numbers. What are they doing? Why does your cell phone company need your social security number? I hope that part of this conversation is what gets some attention because that one should be the wake up. Folks, we're coming back. We got a lot to talk about. We'll dig into some of the market news. We got the S&Ps up by three. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. This portion of the morning market kickoff is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We've got a little bit of market weakness persisting from the highs we had pre-market. You're looking at an S&P right now hanging on to single-digit gains, 1.5309. you got the NASDAQ up by 14 points right now, 18,489. The Dow off by 51. Again, checking out on AT&T, 1718 right now. And, uh, yeah, interesting as we go, right? We jump over to gold, keeping our eye. Gold contract. Catch it a little bit of a bid on its way back to those pre-market highs, 22.77 right now from a price point of 22.65 at about 8 a.m. this morning. And it is interesting um, that as we have going on what? Even in the face that this trail-off going as in lower price, higher yield, okay, you have gold accelerating higher. That is not usually the case, folks, okay? Gold likes what? They like lower yields and a weaker dollar. Usually, that's not what's going on right now. What would happen if we really get a weaker dollar uh, persisting? You jump over to the dollar yen, 151.44 after that drop off we had from last Wednesday, just chopping around a bit. And we use that to jump over to a little discussion on gold right now. Let me make sure we're there. Perfect. Uh, this one from Bloomberg. Is it out this morning or last night? Let's see. When do they print it? Last night at 8 o'clock, updated as of 7.30 a.m. this morning. Gold jumps to a record. As favored Fed inflation gauge, Stokes rally. We had 22, what was it, 2277, I think was the high there. JP Morgan Chase says metal is its number one pick among commodities. And that's pretty interesting considering some of the runs that we've had and some of the commodities out there. They talk about core PC in here, cooling in February. What does cooling inflation point to? Cooling inflation is going to point to potentially a cut. The odds of a cut have gone up slightly. Let's get down to that point in the chart. There we go. Swaps markets are pricing in a 61% chance for a Fed cut in June. 
that is right now, or at least as of this article and the update, up from a 57% chance on Thursday, okay? And as they point out, lower rates are typically positive for gold. But it is interesting, on a very short-term basis, as this market rolls over to negative prices right now, you take a look at what's happening in yields, and we are seeing the price drop dramatically, man. You got the 10-year down 11 ticks right now. It's down 11 ticks, but we were just trading it what, 110.29 as of the overnight session? So we've given up 14 or 15 ticks. That is pointing to higher yield. We have the 10 year yield at 4.26%. That's up about six basis points right now. And even with yields rising, okay, on a very short term basis, of course, yields rising on a 15 minute chart, you see the gold contract. Yeah, we've off, we're off the highs. But what are we off the highs by? Nine dollars? Gold is where we were trading right now at eleven o'clock. Gold's where we were trading basically at three in the morning, right? Gold was at twenty two eighty at three in the morning. We're at twenty two seventy seven fifty. And meanwhile, we've had yields rise six basis points. We've had the dollar strengthen to one oh four sixty four. And even with the strengthening dollar, you have gold persisting to highs. Watch out, folks. And that's a good jump to what do we have going on? We got a special going on because my dad's released his 22nd anniversary gold report, folks. 1,144 issues. Uh, today is issue 1145. Pretty remarkable. 11, 1,145 consecutive weeks. He's got some great winners in there right now, folks. Gold has really been on a run, but you're seeing the action. If this run is real, if we start cutting and we get lower yields and we get a little bit of dollar weakness – it's not too late, and that is putting it lightly in this gold market right now, folks. And it's a heck of a deal. You can come on over to the front page of TFNN. My dad has a new gold report issue out today. You always gain access to the archives. You can sign up, and this special has to do with the monthly rate, okay? The monthly rate is usually $119. Right now, you can save 35% off the monthly price, folks, okay? You just hit the subscribe. What you do is you see this little promo code right here? All you do is you enter 22 years right there. Make sure you hit the add code button. There you see it, 4165. That's 31. That's 35% off the monthly price, okay, off the 119. That brings you down to something like $77, I believe. Is that right? Yeah, $77 and change. And the best part is you lock that in forever, folks, okay? You lock in 35% savings for as long as you remain a subscriber. We don't do these types of sales. Uh, my dad wanted to do a big one, 22 years, 35% off for as long as you remain a subscriber. Still comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. You lock in those savings forever. You lock it in. And this sale is only going to run for one more week, folks. That's it. So get in there. It's going to run. We're going to end it this weekend. And, uh, yeah, 35% off and – it's great that it correlates to a pretty unique time in gold. As what's it what's it correlate to? It correlates to record prices today. Today, record prices in gold. Uh, what better time to check out the gold report report? So check that out on the front page of TFNN. Remember, you have to enter the code 22 years. You enter that, you apply it, you lock it in forever, folks. And you don't have to do anything going forward. That savings is automatically applied to each payment going forward until you cancel. And yeah, gold is on fire, man. Up $40. It's my dad's favorite number, 40. <laughs> on the dot to the penny, $40 as I speak, Twenty two seventy eight, And yeah, I mean, give us a call, folks, 877-927-6648. What do you make of the, the fact that we have gold accelerating, even on a short-term basis, as you have what? You have a little bit of higher yield there. We got the 10-year sitting at about 4.26%. We have the yen sitting at 151.50. My goodness, uh, as the Bank of Japan and the officials out there have persistently said that they will step in and not let that weaken to a further level. We'll see. They always can't control the market, as we know. But uh, we live in interesting times. We live in interesting times in the gold market. That is for sure. Gold, 2278. And you got to look at it on a long term basis, folks. Okay. Let's take that Fibonacci number off there. And boy, a lot of technical traders out there, of course. And what does that speak to, right? I mean, it is interesting, right? Where well, you come up to the highs of 2011, absolutely remarkable, 2011, man. You make it to a high of 1923.70 on the futures. And what did it do? Gold has been consolidating at this level for almost four years, folks. You hit a high of 2005 in July of 2020. And almost four years later, we have gold finally breaking above that level. 
And folks, you know what type of moves that gold can have, man. You know, there's an $800 run that this thing had from the lows of November of 2018 to that high we had. You consolidate. And yeah, it speaks for itself. We'll see where that gold market goes. All right, let's jump around to some of the other equities. We'll go back to a short-term time frame. We jump over to Tesla shares this morning. Tesla basically flat at about 175. We jump over to the Fab. I saw I called the Fab 4 today. We'll, we'll, we'll jump over to that as well. As Yeah, there's been some laggards, man. Microsoft, they're separating some of their divisions. We'll get into that as well later in the program. Uh, interesting to see these big tech companies, right, dealing with antitrust concerns. Microsoft, they're coming into there. Microsoft up what? Coming into the open, at least about two dollars. We're looking at 4.23 on the open from 4.2072, and that's with the Nasdaq 100 only positive by about one tenth percent. We jump over to Amazon shares this morning. They're going to get a lift on the open as well with a bid ask above 181. We jump over to Apple shares. Not the case, man. Apple going to open in the lower. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the opening bell. Don't go away. Be right back. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Keckstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. S&P's flat from where we were on Thursday, man, as you digest a very important economic data point with core PCE coming in pretty much expectations. 
And as I mentioned, we get some Fed speak this week. Many of the Fed board members, they'll be speaking. Chairman Powell, he'll be speaking on Wednesday. We get the non-farm payrolls on Friday. Important data point, we get ADP, private payrolls, on Wednesday as well. Markets pick things up pretty much where we um, left off. We got crude prices. 83.31, higher prices at the pump coming at you. And you could say the story of the day is gold. Gold trading at 22.74 on gold. Remarkable price acceleration for that gold contract. We jump around to some of the action that we have going on in individual equities. How about UPS? They give it up. They were higher. We're positive by four tenths percent right now. As they are going to be um, the primary air cargo provider for UPS. And that is, excuse me, for United States Postal Service. And that is over FedEx. So there's UPS. You're higher, but you give it up on the pre-market. And you jump over to FedEx right now. And they're a little bit lower. And bringing over that headline real briefly. UPS to replace FedEx as U.S. Postal Service's primary air cargo provider. Pretty interesting. And like that seems like a pretty big story. And you have UPS not even higher, which is remarkable when you think about it, right? The contract's financial terms not disclosed. That's probably a big part of it. The award was, quote, unquote, significant. Not who, sure who they're quoting on significant because it is interesting that you have FedEx down 1.3%. But you got UPS, man, um, barely positive, right? UPS shares up one dollar six tenths percent in the positive but you give it up even on that pretty significant news i would agree so but is it going to be significant to the bottom line that's the question the company has launched a drive to rein in costs to combat weaker freight demand and improve margins um it's a change of fortunes that's a senior portfolio manager at some investment company in Atlanta. Nonetheless, FedEx said Monday it would make adjustments to its network to make up for the loss of contract that brought in nearly two billion dollars in annual business Whew. the company also said its profitability will improve in fiscal 2025 and beyond echoing analyst views um, made amid the contract negotiations with the united states postal service pretty interesting man uh yeah pretty interesting to say the least no real huge move on on that type of fundamental story FedEx loses 1.2%, but they catch a lift. You're talking about billions of dollars a year, and UPS just rises, what, half a percent? Remarkable. All right, let's check in on some of those FANG stocks. Microsoft shares, as I mentioned, they're making a change to how they structure their businesses, potentially in the pursuit of avoiding antitrust concerns. This is going to be a lingering deal that just persists. Look at this thing, man. I mean, they call it the Fab Four now. It's... The, Microsoft and NVIDIA are like a class of their own right now, man. NVIDIA up by half a percent, but Microsoft shares, you jump over. What are we talking about now, man? We're talking about a company that is valued at $3.16 trillion. $3.16 trillion from Microsoft. You compare that to Apple, that's down a half a percent. What's Apple at? 2.6. Microsoft's got a $500 billion lead on Apple at this point. You talk about catching acceleration, man. Remarkable. All right, and what else are we jumping to here? Yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about Disney. We'll talk a little bit of Taiwan Semiconductor. Where was my Fab Four story? All right, we'll get to that one. You know, this one's an interesting one. I found myself, uh, if you haven't checked out the program, folks, and I know I'm about six or seven years late to the party, but I've gotten into the F1 series on Netflix recently, and it is pretty interesting. Uh, Formula One owner Liberty to buy MotoGP, $3.8 billion deal. Uh, if you're looking for a cool program, man, check out that F1 program on Netflix. And I know I am late to the party. They got that great Grand Prix in St. Pete that comes. Uh, visited that with Tommy and my dad recently. And it's just an interesting one as you really take a look at whether it's the personalities, right? There's only 20 drivers that make it to the top level of that F1. 20 drivers, and then you got the teams in there. Some of these teams spending upwards of $400, $500 million a year. They got like 3,500 employees just for each team. Um, they're, they're just magnificent businesses and competition is really cool and we're all competitive if you're in the market folks um, but nonetheless you're talking about multi-billion dollar deals liberty media uh yeah taking over moto gp buying its exclusive rights holder nonetheless interesting especially since i've been digging into that f1 series recently all right what else we got in here yeah we talked about ac at t we talked about ups Whew, let's talk about this one man not surprising u.s home insurance premiums may hit a record this year Average premium for U.S. homeowners insurance expected to hit $2,522, up 6% from the end of 2023. 
Check this one out, though. Premiums in Florida will approach $12,000. $12,000 in Florida, man. Uh, If you are in Florida, folks, you're dealing with home insurance problems, make sure you look into citizens. Okay? That's all I can say. Not many people, um, you know, if you're listening to this program, you may have an idea of that. The problem is not many people are as financially literate as the people out there listening to this program. And that's an issue because so often you don't realize that you might have even the option to go with citizens. Maybe uh, many home insurance agents, they don't want to steer you to citizens. They're not making as much off of selling a citizens insurance policies. So there's almost a perverse incentive to keep people away from citizens in the home insurance agent market. And if you're financially illiterate, many times you probably can't gain access to that market. Um, I'm generalizing, okay, but the numbers in Florida are bonkers. I gave an example recently. My home insurance premiums rose something to the degree of like almost $8,000 a year from something like 2400 bucks a couple of years ago. And when you go to Citizens, folks, my insurance premium dropped back down to like 1300 bucks, and maybe it went up to 1600 or 1700 this year from 1300 Yeah, that's down from almost $8,000 in the private home insurance market. And yes, it is not a good deal when you think about the fact that now who is prone to those insurance costs? Well, it's the state and it's going to be the taxpayers that potentially take that hit. And that's an issue that they're trying to deal with. Of course, um, home insurance becoming a flashpoint in the U.S. And, you know, there are many different reasons in Florida that this is happening. You had legislation allowing for rampant, rampant um, fraud especially when it came to roofers and roofing to that degree. But guess what you also have? You have higher insurance costs because of higher claims that are happening because of some of the weather-related incidents going on. And it's not just massive storms that destroy houses, okay? It's when they come through and destroy everything in their path. Yeah, look at these numbers, man. Projected annual rate, Louisiana, right? If you're on the Gulf Coast, man, watch out. 7,800, up 23%. Even Maine's up 19%, man. You're on the coast there as well, right? They don't include Florida in there. Six states, including Texas and Washington, are going to see theirs remain flat, okay? Not sure how Texas is doing it, but nonetheless. Yeah, that story's not going away anytime soon, and we got to get a hold of it, man, because that, you talk about inflation, man. Right? That one's not going away anytime soon. That's going to drive rental prices. It's going to drive home prices. That's been a huge component of whether you're talking about CPI, consumer prices, rent, uh, owner equivalent rent, a huge component of CPI. That's why the Fed does not prefer that inflation gauge as much as many others. But nonetheless, the story persists. Market catching a bid. Check out the NASDAQ 100, man. That's a pop for you. 18,591. The Dow gives it up on the open. Futures just above 40,000. Stay tuned, folks. We'll talk some other equities when we get back. We got a lot to talk about still. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. 
and over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up by about eight points. NASDAQ 100 catches a bid up by two-thirds percent right now, 18,598 as we speak. You take a look at it on the daily within only about 100 points of the all-time high, man, 18,709, made on March 21st. You're catching a bid right now as the NASDAQ 100 up almost seven-tenths percent, and we use that to jump over. It's not the Magnificent Seven. They're calling it the Fab Four. Uh, as we come into the final four, interesting weekend of basketball. Always love good competition, man. Nothing like, and I'm not a huge basketball fan, folks. Uh, you know, I love playing basketball with my friends. Was not really good at shooting that basketball. I played some hockey. I played some football. I played some baseball. Um, but nonetheless, you got to love the competition of March Madness when it's single elimination. You got kids out there living and dying on each game, every shot. You got upstates. You got NC State, an 11 seed, making it to the Final Four. You got the NC State women's team. That college campus must be going bonkers, man, as you got the men and the women's team heading to the Final Four. Pretty interesting action out there. Uh, but yeah, it's the Fab Four in the market as well now. It's not the Magnificent Seven. It's a bullish signal that the market is rallying without the likes of Apple and Tesla. Some investors say, well, that's, you know, some investors say anything. That's quite a headline. I wanted to check out this chart, though. Not surprising NVIDIA. Not surprising Meta as well. Apple's probably the most surprising in the story, right? You saw Berkshire Hathaway dumping some of their position a little bit ahead of the slide, and they got some problems, man. And they are not capitalizing like some of the other equities here. Now, Meta shares, the important thing to remember is it's easier to accelerate on a percentage basis to higher percentages when you're coming off lower percentage numbers, okay? This is the share price coming out of when? I think 2024, the beginning of, right? We're in April 1st, so you make it through the entire first quarter. NVIDIA shares through the roof. Meta shares up 40%. Even the likes of Amazon pushing almost a 20% return. Microsoft and Apple, um, excuse me, Alphabet as well. Apple, and then you got Tesla and B careful of tesla folks uh yeah one of the quotes here if you told me eight weeks ago that apple and tesla would be down as much as they are um yeah would be surprising to many i'll finish that one folks quarterly earnings growth right check it out the magnificent seven check out how we've deviated from where we were so first quarter they crushed everything versus the 493 other companies in the s p 500 look at the shift going on Remarkable. Quarterly earnings growth changed from a year earlier. Okay. Look at the difference. Pay attention to this, man. And this might be the healthiest thing for this market going forward. You have an 18% quarterly earnings growth for the 493 other companies. You back it up to the first quarter and you're looking at a declining 
quarterly earnings growth. So the other companies are picking up the slack where you've had the Magnificent Seven beginning to struggle. Um, yeah, so we all know what's happening, man. We'll jump over to MetaShares this morning. M-E-T-A for Facebook. It just doesn't stop, man. Check it out. Up by 2.3%. Look at this thing, man. 496.88. We just hit 481 on the open, man. Remarkable. We jump over to Microsoft shares. As I mentioned, they're splitting up what they're doing to potentially head off more antitrust concerns. Microsoft shares up a full percent. We jump over to Amazon shares up a full percent. You jump over to Google shares up by 3% percent this morning and you jump over to apple and they're negative the trends are continuing and this might just be the beginning of the trend okay because you take a look at a longer term chart of apple you're right back at the 3a2 i'm gonna remove that things have changed man you're right back at the 3a2 and you are at a very critical technical area for apple okay you're at the highs of where we were in august of 2022 that high was 176.15, but you see the bar that we had there. You kind of topped out at about the 170 area, right where, right where we are right now. And who's to say that we don't drive back to the 130 area, man? You're in a very critical area. You break, you break below here, here, and where are you talking about? Where's the next acceleration to lower prices on Apple, man? It is a very dicey situation. Let's even put it on a monthly, all right? Context is very important where you are in this market. You trade down to 130 on Apple, Okay, and that's still a run from 40 bucks at the beginning of 2019. Okay, this run has been stratospheric in many of these equities, and Apple is struggling, and now they're in the crosshairs of antitrust concerns as well. And they might have the biggest problem out there because you think about their services revenue, how they're capitalizing off 30% of every single day app they sell in their app store. That's going to change, period, end of story. You see the likes of companies like Amazon, et cetera. I gave the example recently last week where I signed up for Amazon Photos as a way to back up my photos on the iPhone. If you're a Prime member, folks, Amazon Photos can back up for free your photos. Now, the thing that they get you on, though, is that they don't have the videos for free. They have a cap on the videos. I have too many videos. You'd end up paying for the videos. And I found myself saying, this is pretty interesting that even companies like Amazon are having to give Apple 30% without saying a third party payment possibility. That is all about to change dramatically. And it's going to hamper where Apple is. And you see that we are at a critical level. You're almost right where you were in the beginning of 2022. You're right where you were in the middle of 2022. You're right at the 382 pullback of the acceleration you had from the lows of 2023. And you break below this and you're probably coming right back down, man. Look at the volume that we just had in March. 1.4 billion shares traded in that price point. Yeah, I mean, that dwarfs almost anything we had. Yeah, that's the biggest bar we've had since when? Since the acceleration of March of 2023, the high of that bar was 165. And you're going to be into that bar, man. A huge acceleration on Apple to negative prices. And keep in mind that that was a huge acceleration to negative prices on volume last month when you had the market just accelerating higher. Right? Look at the move we had in the S&Ps. And meanwhile, Apple's tanking lower on volume. Can't stress it enough to be careful on Apple, man. NASDAQ 100. Look at that, 18,586. All right. We jump over to Taiwan Semiconductor, man. Check it out. Up 5%. Okay, now it's interesting, man. Great story out there from the journal. And it's talking about how he f started this company, the founder. Check it out. He turned 55, then he started the world's most important company, Morris Chang. So he was working at, I believe it was Texas Instruments. Is that the company here? I believe it was. I read this earlier. And he started this company was 55. He had already built himself quite a fortune in the millions. He had uh, a nice nest egg that he was financially sound and, and protected, earning hundreds of thousands of dollars just from the interest he was getting risk-free on, on government securities. He founded Taiwan Semiconductor. And of course, that thing takes off now. I'm going to try and find. This is a long article. I was trying to... Here it is. Perfect. Today, Taiwan Semiconductor operates at a scale that is almost incomprehensible, okay? The first Intel microprocessor had about 2,000 transistors, probably remarkable for its time. The latest NVIDIA chip is packed with more than 200 billion transistors. I think that's the one that they just came out with, okay? Churning out identical copy copies of a single chip for the iPhone requires Taiwan Semiconductor Fab to produce more than a quantillion 
transistors. That is one million trillions every few months. In a year, the entire semiconductor industry produces more transistors than the combined quantity of all goods produced by all other companies in all under other industries in all human history. We'll talk a little bit more. But uh, yeah, never too late to start a company, man. 55 years old, he started this company. His stake now worth $3.5 billion. We got one more segment, folks. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. It's the 22nd anniversary of the Gold Report. Can you believe it? We've taken 22 trips around the sun together, and we have many more to come. This year alone, the Gold Report has returned over 50%, and I want you to come along for the ride. I provide in-depth analysis of the gold market as a whole, in addition to providing outlooks on individual mining equities. For a limited time, you can save 35% off the monthly price for as long as you subscribe. 35% savings will be applied to the current monthly price, and it will stay with your subscription forever. With gold pushing all-time highs, gold equities trading higher, and inflation still raging, this is a great time to try my newsletter, The Gold Report. First-time subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Just enter promo code 22 years at checkout, and you'll see the 35% savings applied to your subscription price, and this deal will stay with your subscription for as long as you subscribe. Don't forget, just enter promo code 22 years at checkout. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN Education investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up by five right now. NASDAQ 100 up by about 112. And finishing that story on Taiwan Semi, you got Taiwan Semiconductor up by 4.3%. We jump over to NVIDIA shares up by 1.5% right now. We jump over to Intel up by 2.5% right now. AMD up by 3.4%. The world needs chips, man. Taiwan Semi, 4.3. And yeah, you take a look at this. Now, I got to jump back to the story. There it is. Uh, so, yes, he was working at Texas Instruments. That was the company. He got passed over by some of the jobs. He wanted Texas, Texas Instruments, TI, to focus on semiconductors, but the company wanted to keep selling consumer products, home computers, and all that stuff, he says. That was a serious distraction and a serious diversion of corporate resources in 1983. Once he accepted that he wouldn't be promoted and his company wasn't going to bet on the market that he believed was a future, he quit Texas Instruments. Uh, almost immediately, he went to a company, General Instrument, 
as the president and COO. A year into that, he realized it wasn't going to work. He retired from that company. There were the two headlines, one from the journal. No, both from the journal out there. Uh, and nonetheless, at 55 years old, man, he moved to Taiwan. He founded that company. He only ended up with a stake of something like 0.5% or something like that. Uh, yeah. And it says in here, he was never after great wealth. He was only after financial security, and he was looking for about $200,000 a year after taxes in the 80s. I'm sure that's a lot of financial security at that point. Um, but what happened? Um, yeah, he exercised some options. He had the financial security that he was looking for. He exercised a few million dollars in stock options. He bought tax-exempt municipal bonds that paid him enough to be financially secure by his living standards. And then what did he do? Yeah, he decided to go move to Taiwan, pursue what he thought was the future. And nonetheless, here we are. Um, boy, what is that now? 15, almost 40 years later, he's 92 years old. Pretty remarkable. Stepped down as the chairman, I think, in 2018. And yes, they make a lot of chips, to put it lightly. And that company obviously in focus, especially what's going on with China and U.S. relations. Folks, thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget about the Gold Report special and watch your emails out there because we got a special email going out to all our customers uh, early this morning we're going to send it out in a little bit it's going to have access to today's gold report as well and you'll be able to check out that special remember 22 years folks enter that code check out the gold report and let's see where we are in gold right now gold trading up 26 dollars on the session 2264 stay tuned folks basil chapman coming up next have a great monday we'll see you tomorrow everybody